A fugitive NSA leaker Edward Snowden made a rare public appearance earlier this week via the web. He was speaking via satellite to an audience of thousands of people at the South by Southwest Interactive Festival taking place in Austin, Texas. Snowden urging participants to help fix the government surveillance program. The NSA, the sort of global mass surveillance that's occurring in all of these countries, not just the U.S., and it's important to remember that this is a global issue, they're setting fire to the future of the Internet. And the people who are in this room now, you guys are all the firefighters, and we need you to help us fix this. Well, this is the first time that Snowden has addressed people in the U.S. since he fled the country last June with thousands of those secret documents. Joining us now to talk about that is Kim McNicholas with more about South by Southwest. Right. It's not just a music festival anymore. It's really become an interactive festival, hasn't right. it? Right. You have Edward Snowden there. You even <laughs> had Chelsea Clinton who actually showed up. And uh -huh. you can't forget about all of the musicians exactly. and all of the yeah. celebrities, including mm -hmm. John Swartz from USA Today had an article that he wrote. And he said, you know, I had a little bit of a Lady Gaga spot. Oh, really? She's there, yeah, too. She was there so it's, too, an, just it's an official the event now. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But surprisingly, Lady Gaga, the wearables, wearables actually really caught my eye mm -hmm. because Google announced that it's releasing its SDK for wearables, its right. software developer kit. And mm -hmm. basically what that means is it's saying, hey, we have these devices and we want programmers to come in and develop features and functionality for them, particularly the Google Glass. You've seen those Google oh, sure. Glasses. Oh, yeah. And also their new smartwatch. Well, we haven't heard much about the no. smartwatch, have we? No, we haven't. Um, um, imagine, remember those uh, calculator watches that oh, they used sure. to have? My yeah. dad got me one. I was so <laughs> bad at math. He's like, that'll help you on your test. Right. But it's going to have so much more functionality than that. You'll be able to uh, answer your phone via your watch. If oh, your watch is mm -hmm. in, in, if your phone's in your purse, yeah. um, you'll be able to get your text messages, maybe even take a 360 panoramic photo. But oh, wouldn't that be something? It's all speculation at this point, sure. but they do want more functionality to be on it when they supposedly, it's rumored to be released in June. It's as mysterious as the Google Bar isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're hiding something in there. Well, uh, l let's talk a little bit about anything else that's, that stood out to you on that platform at South by Southwest. Well, actually, so investors were really talking about an Austin-based startup called Pristine. Mm. And mm -hmm. what Pristine is, is making is uh, the first ever HIPAA-compliant video-based communications tool for doctors oh. on gl Google Glass. Huh. And so what it's being used for right now is wound care and dermatology. Mm -hmm. And it allows a specialist to come in remotely using this Google Glass and to help diagnose patients, help in surgery, help train medical students, and it, all the doctor has to do is stream video straight through the glasses to a specialist. That is amazing. And they can help diagnose patients. Yeah. What a wonderful application this could be. Although there's so many applications yeah. for this technology. Yeah, there's there's one uh, called Bionium? Bionium, Bionium. Yes. Tell us about that. It oh. focuses on a heartbeat, huh? <laughs> yes. So this one's really interesting because I didn't even know that people had, and I'm not a doctor, so go figure. Never studied medicine, but <laughs> I didn't know that people had unique cardiac rhythms, and they're saying that the cardiac rhythm could actually replace the, the fingerprint in terms of determining a person's really? identity. Huh. I had no idea. Right. And no, neither yeah. did I. That, that's fascinating. It's amazing what they're coming up with. Um, I also heard that you, came, you, you found a cure for shopaholics. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't know if you yeah. would call it a, a cure. Yeah. I mean, it could further compound uh -huh. the problem for a shopaholic. <laughs> But Discovery Labs, actually right out of here in San Francisco, has uh -huh. developed an app that allows a user who has Google Glass to take a picture of someone's piece of clothing. Let's say you liked oh, my shirt. Okay. And so you could take a picture of it using Google Glass. Mm -hmm. And then the um, image recognition technology in this app would scour the web looking for something that's actually similar <laughs> <laughs> to this. It would, allow, it would allow you to buy it right then and there online. Isn't that something? Oh, boy. I don't know if that's going to cure shopaholics no. or just make it easier for them. <laughs> also, on this topic of fashion, you were talking about that you found a, the, the cuff, a combination of fashion and security, right? Have you seen that? It, no. it actually is um, It's a security alert system that's mm -hmm. embedded in jewelry. Incredibly inconspicuous. Let's say you sense is, is danger. That what yeah, we're that's at it. There? Okay. So, those are the bracelets. And the there you go. You can see the, the chip actually going in. Mm -hmm. And if you sense any sort of danger, all you need to do is squeeze the wristband or press a button on the necklace and uh -huh. it sends a push notification to your friends and family that you program into oh. the system and it also sends your location. 
Fantastic. So it's it's a way of dialing 911 from a, a piece sense, of jewelry. And that was one thing I couldn't find out, at least mm -hmm. initially. I don't think you can actually, you know, press a button and notify 911 mm -hmm. with it at this point, but I I would see that happening down the road. You would think that'd be the next logical step. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, the latest from Watson, oh. that famous computer that, from Jeopardy, right? Yes. Yeah. You remember that Watson oh, won sure. Jeopardy, like, mm -hmm. right, three yeah. years ago. Well, now they've reprogrammed the smartest computer system in, in the world to actually, um, you know, be a chef, in a sense. <laughs> of course. Um, it's analyzed thousands and thousands and thousands of recipes out there. Uh -huh. And after analyzing all these recipes, all you have to do now is input a region, like Cuba, Brazil, or Czechoslovakia, and input a couple of ingredients and the type of food that you want, a soup, a pie, a casserole, and then, boom, it pops out with a recipe, a brand new <laughs> recipe, and the chefs are serving, for example, the um, a Czech pork belly moussaka with peas. Of course. And it can't, right? That's you would fantastic. come up with that on your oh, own. Yeah. <laughs> well, what we need now is some, some way for it to cook the meal yes. as well. Yeah, okay. not burn down the kitchen. And allow us to go shopping through the Google Glass. <laughs> see, I like that one. Yeah. Good, Nicholas. Thank you so much. These are, these are fantastic. Can't wait to see them all. We'll be right back.